Hey guys, Jason here, Old Car Guy. Tonight we're working on our Fitec fuel injection, trying to figure out why we're so hard on gas and why it runs so rich. So stay tuned. So this past weekend I made a approximately 600 kilometer, about 350 mile trip uh, down to see Trucker Dave, as you guys saw in the last video. And one of the things I noticed about the truck was even though it runs very, very smooth, um, you know, it's got all kinds of power and all that good stuff. I just found it to be very, very hard on fuel. Now I've complained before about how hard on fuel this thing is. It's a built 350, uh, a mild build, nothing really spectacular, um, but it's got some get up and go. And when I had the Quadra jet on it, before I switched to the fuel injection, I was getting about 17 and a half, 18 miles per gallon. Yeah. Go figure. But now that I got the Phytec on there, it seems to be getting about 12 and three quarter to 13 and a quarter miles per gallon. And that's about all I did on that trip down uh, to Southern Maine. So I wanted to try and figure out what was going on and why, because I've been changing a few things on the uh, settings on the handheld. And so it prompted me to, to try and figure it out because we're going on this big long trip and I want to get the maximum I can out of my fuel economy over the course of these roughly 3,000 miles I'm going to put on at the end of the month. So, I got playing around with the um, coolant temperature sensor. And I'm going to put a picture up right here. And as you can see in this picture, we were reaching about 140 to 145 degrees on the handheld, which means that's what the coolant temperature sensor was reading. Then I pulled out my thermal gun and I took a shot at the intake where the coolant temperature sensor goes in. And it was reading anywhere from 173, 178 uh, in there. So that tells me that the coolant temperature sensor is not reading properly. Reached out to my guy at Phytech and he says there's a calibration that you can do through the handheld to make sure that your um, coolant temperature sensor is matched to the actual temperature. I watched the video. If you guys don't know what that is, go to Phytech's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link down in the description box below as well as over here somewhere. And uh, I think it's episode 63. It tells you how to go through and calculate or um, adjust that calibration. So I went and I watched the video. I'm here now testing everything and uh, let's jump into it and I'll show you what we're up against here and what we've got to do to try and fix it. So I've got my Testman smart multimeter if you guys want one of these there's going to be a link in the description box down below for that as well um, it tells us to check the voltage on the coolant temperature sensor so when i probe the yellow pin it tells me we've got four and a half volts with the key on then we take our trusty thermometer here and we get a reading and this reading is coming up at about 56 then you go to your calibration tool on the handheld and you find the four and a half volts are closest to it so in our case, four and a half volts is going to be about here. So now we can change that to the 56 degrees that uh, is the actual temperature just by moving uh, the thing sideways. The problem is it maxes out at 49 degrees. So that prompted me to grab the coolant temperature sensor that I picked up at Napa today and test it and see what the values were with it. So I've unplugged the uh, coolant temp sensor that came with the Phytec, and now I've got the one that I got from Napa. And if I probe the yellow side, it comes up and tells me we've got a reading of 3.94 volts. Tells me a couple of things. 3.94 volts on the handheld um, is a better reading. We can go in and we can adjust on that voltage. The Phytec unit that that came with the vehicle is out of spec. So we're gonna go through and replace the coolant temperature sensor with the one I got from Napa. And then we can set the parameters based on that, whatever it was, 3.7 volts. Then it says to run the vehicle and let it warm up the temperature. And as it hits certain voltages, then you take the temperature of the vehicle and set those voltages on the screen. So I'm gonna swap out that coolant temp sensor, then we're gonna start making some calibrations on the Phytec. 
So we got the new sensor installed and we've got 4.14 volts on the uh, multimeter. So when we come over here, we've got to find the nearest to 4.14. So that's going to be the 3.78. And we've going to set the uh, temperature at 52 degrees, which is what our handheld uh, is basically telling us. It's actually 55.3. So we're going to go down here and go to 55 uh, 55.4 and we're going to hit enter now what we can do is we can start the vehicle let it warm up the temperature and as we reach different voltages on the screen here we can adjust our temperature or our thermostat settings over here that way when we're up to 170 degrees or higher the handheld or the phytech unit itself will know that it's ready to be tuned, programmed, and that it's up to operating temperature. So we'll get the garage door open, we'll get this thing started, and we'll start and we'll check where our voltages go and make the necessary adjustments. So as the voltage decreases, that means the temperature is increasing. So we're looking for 3.78, which is right now. And we're at 72.7. And now we're going to wait for 3.37 volts and we'll take another measurement. We're going to go with 83. And then we just keep doing the same process until it gets up to temperature. And then that way, the Flytech knows where we're supposed to be. Okay, so at, at idle, it's kind of leveling out between 1.21 and 1.24. And if we go to our screen, we're kind of somewhere between the 02 and the 03 slot. When I take the temperature of the intake, we're at 177. And uh, so I kind of manipulated the number a little bit at 156 so that when I go back into my coolant temp gauge, it actually tells the computer that we're running at 170, which is actually fairly close by a couple degrees. I'm not too concerned about that. I feel more comfortable now with this the way it is versus the way it was and uh, our IAC steps are actually starting to come down with the computer thinking it's got the right uh, temperature in it now. So as it sits right now, there's not much we can do to test fuel economy unless you're prepared to put some miles on. I'm not prepared to do that tonight, but what I do wanna do is I wanna shut the truck off, let it cool down, and I wanna come out in the morning and see if that made any difference with the way this thing starts. I should be able to just reach in the door without putting my foot on the gas, and cranking it over because now it's got the proper settings. So let me show you a couple of the other things that I've adjusted on this thing and we'll see once we get put some miles on it if it's going to make a difference. So what I've done is I've put my prime fuel multiplier. I'm still not sure what that does but I think that's how much fuel it dumps in uh, upon prime and if it's cranking at 20 degrees I got it set at zero. If I got it cranking at 65, I got it at minus 25. And if I'm cranking at uh, 170 degrees, meaning it's already warmed up, uh, I've got it set at minus 55. Because if it's already warmed up, we don't need a whole lot of fuel to get this thing going. At least that's what I'm thinking. So we can go back and we're also going to go into AFR targets. And this is where you can change how lean or rich you want this thing to be um, when you're driving down the road or at certain um, acceleration pressures, or whatever you call it, I don't know. So from the base, I've set these all up five different notches. Uh, so I can go from 13.35, uh, and I can kind of lean that out as far as I want. And I decided to stop at 13.35, uh, and I bumped them all up a little bit uh, to the lean side, because when you're cruising down the road and you're looking for fuel economy, you don't need this thing to be dumping fuel 
down the throat of that throttle body because it's just going to cost you money. And we're going to try it a few times and do some tests on the fuel economy to see where and how far I can lean this thing out without causing extra heat and stress on the engine um, and optimizing the actual fuel economy. If you guys know any more about this than I do, which clearly it would not take much, um, and you have a small block Chevy 350 uh, with a Fitec, and you're willing to help talk me through some of these settings to try and get some fuel economy out of this thing, by all means, reach out to me, Instagram, Facebook, or email me. Uh, my email address is oldcarguy at gmail.com. Uh, you can see it up on screen there. And uh, I'll be happy to listen to anybody. I'll give you my contact information from there. And maybe we can have a FaceTime or a phone call, uh, a video chat of some sort, and step our way through this. I don't know what the limits are. I don't know how far we can lean these things out without causing harm. Uh, they say too far, and your cylinders uh, can get hot and create excessive wear or too much wear on the engine. Um, as it is right now, I pull a spark plug, and she's soaked. So... Like I said, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna let this thing cool down so in the morning we'll come out, we'll try and start it up, see how it starts on a cold startup, and uh, from there if it starts better, well, we're on the right track, and uh, we can start adjusting from there. Uh, the big thing is, is the fuel economy, so uh, we'll let it warm up and take it for a drive after that point. So um, I'll see you in a couple of minutes when it's uh, the next morning. All right, so it's the next morning, and uh, we're going to start this truck up cold and see what uh, see what transpires. I do want to check and make sure that the uh, temperature gauge uh, in the truck is still, or on the uh, system, will still read properly. So right now we're at about uh, 59 degrees on a cold intake, 60 degrees on a cold intake. And so we're just going to reach in here and uh, start it up, and then we'll check the temperature on the... Uh, controller. So, three things that we just witnessed. One, even though it cranked over a little bit more than it normally would, it started on its own without me having to give it a little bit of throttle on the gas. Two, the controller was reading within a couple of degrees of what the temperature actually is, which is perfect. And three, when I shut it off, it didn't diesel because this thing was dieseling, I believe, as a result of simply too much fuel. We still got a little bit of fine tuning on the uh, fuel. Maybe I've got it set a little bit too low. Uh, that's why it's cranking so much. Um, I'm going to try it again here, and this time I'm going to let the complete prime finish out, which I did not do, and I did that on purpose. Uh, so I'm going to turn the key, wait for the fuel pump to shut off, then I'm going to try and start it, see what happens. Uh, because with these Fitex, when they're, fi when they're fine tuned, uh, you should just be able to reach in, turn the key, and start it. You shouldn't have to wait for the fuel pump, uh, because I never used to have to when I first had this installed. So let's try it again. Fuel pumps off, starts right up. So, so I think with a little bit of fine tuning on that calibration, uh, we'll be able to get this thing to start very quickly on the key. Um, and uh, again, no more dieseling. I just shut it off and it didn't diesel again because usually when it first starts up, and if it's at that higher idle, anything over say 800 RPM, um, It'll just kind of chug along a little bit. Sometimes for four or five seconds, it's pretty embarrassing when you pull into somebody's uh, uh, into somebody's parking lot and there's people around looking at this. Oh, nice, nice truck rolling in, and then all of a sudden it sits there and chugs away when you shut it off. Anyway, we're getting closer. Uh, I wanted to make this video just simply to show you guys that when you don't know much about these things, uh, there's a couple of things at play. One, Fitech has a bunch of support videos dealing with a lot of little things like this. Two, they have a great tech support team uh, that when you call those guys and gals, they know exactly what they're talking about to help step you through some of the little issues that you've been having. Um, the third thing is 
it's a learning experience. As much as I hated to say it to uh, Ryan over at Everything is Broken Garage, he says, oh, well, you'll have fun and then you'll know how to do it. And it's like, yeah, shut up, Ryan. Because <laughs> in the meantime, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to get to this point uh, to learn something new. Um, I don't like electronic techie stuff. I'm not sure, uh, you know, but anyways, I did it. And uh, with the help and the encouragement of Ryan, uh, the help of the folks over at Phytech, we managed to get this thing so that it will actually start. I got to try this one more time just because it's been so long since it worked this good. So turn the key, let the thing prime up. And when the prime is done, we start it. It should take right off. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. So the next thing, again, no dieseling. The next thing that we've got to deal with uh, is get this thing out for a drive and see what kind of fuel economy it's going to get. We'll head down to the gas station, top off the fuel. We'll drive it probably 50 miles, come back and uh, top it off again and see how much fuel it used in those 50 miles and do a quick calculation uh, to see the fuel economy. So uh, give me a few minutes. I've got to work today, but give me a few minutes and uh, I'll come back on my lunchtime. We'll take this thing out for a quick rip, uh, and then we'll come back and uh, calculate that fuel economy, see if we're gaining a little bit. And if we are, then we can start, keep going uh, with those adjustments on the, uh, on the air fuel ratios uh, and stuff like that. So um, give me a few minutes, I'll be right back. So we're out on our test drive here and I think we're making some headway with this fuel economy thing because we started out this trip with uh, 91 389 miles on the odometer. We are at 91 421. So we've got more than 30 miles on this thing and it perceivably the needle on the gas gauge hasn't even moved yet. Uh, we're going to give it a long test. We're probably going to put closer to uh, 70 or 80 miles on this, maybe even 100. Um, but I'm trying to maintain speed at 70 miles per hour, which is basically interstate driving because, well, that's where we are and that's what we'll be doing most of our driving on when we make our trip down to Georgia. So I'll give you another update when we get a few more miles on. Okay, we're back from our little jaunt. We did 94 miles. Now it's time to fill it up and see how much fuel it took. So once we get all the math done, we had 25.09 liters to go 94 miles. We divide that by 3.78, that gives us 6.85 miles or 13.72 miles per gallon. And that is an increase of roughly one mile per gallon over what we were doing before. And I think we're heading in the right direction. So I think we're gonna fi keep fine tuning on those AFRs and see where that gets us uh, I'm okay with that. I want to get a little bit more out of it because you got to remember over a 1500 mile road trip, every mile per gallon you save is money in your pocket or that can take you further on the other end. So, uh, that's the plan is to keep tuning with those AFRs and see how far we can push it before, well, we start noticing a detriment to the performance of the vehicle, uh, or what have you. Uh, I think we got to keep increasing that cruising AFR. I think we got it set now at 15. Maybe we'll push that. Uh, we'll do another trip around 15.5 and keep playing around with it. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this content, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because uh, we've got all kinds of great stuff. We're heading down to Atlanta, Georgia for C10s in the city. And uh, we've got other project vehicles, the Yugo engine swap. We've got several Panther platform vehicles. Uh, we've got Chrysler Cordoba. Uh, we're always working on something. We're always buying and selling some neat projects. If you guys like that stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. By subscribing, it just gives you a notification that I put out a new video so you can jump right out and watch it. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.